uh, the girl who killed her schoolmate over an online game? Over an online What does argument? it take for someone to become evil? And what is the worst thing that a child can do? These are the questions people started to ask as they dug deep into the case of Nevada Tan in the early 2000s. But who was Nevada Tan? And why did this name... Yo, early 2000s? Mind you, the internet wasn't even that, that like, crazy because the internet was just, like, you know, coming into form, becoming something a lot of people didn't know about the internet. So the fact... Damn, how you get into an online argument with someone at that time? ...come so famous. Even people who don't know Nevada Tan's origins have likely come across memes of this now popular and dark character. Her story begins in Japan, Never one heard of, of her. countries with the lowest crime rates in the world, a setting where no one would expect a child to do what Nevada Tan did. Considered by many to be the safest country in the world, Japan is the kind of... I gotta know what this online argument is about. Imagine it... Imagine she killed somebody because she had an argument about, like, shipping an anime character type shit. That'd be nutty. That'd be nutty. often leave the doors of their homes open and let their children walk to school by themselves because the idea of someone doing something evil does not often cross their minds. However, every now and then, bad things can happen in the land of the rising sun. Dude, this... And on June 1st, 2004, was one of those days. That was the day in which a young girl became an internet sensation, but not for the right reasons. Because, unlike other popular mystery cases, the Nevada Tan case, or- Oh, the is that Nevada the girl that Tan killed a guy, the, the Yandere? Sasebo slashing does not have adults at its core. But instead, this case revolves around two elementary school girls. No, 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 it wasn't the, the Yandere shit. Okay, okay, okay. The Nagasaki Prefecture. And it all started in an empty classroom at the Akubo Elementary School during lunchtime. Once everyone went back to oh, their classrooms. Oh, uh oh, she caught her lacking when the sunset in the school started happening. That's usually like when, when we about to get down to business. You guys know that already. You guys ever seen an anime and the sun setting and you still in school and the fucking classroom is orange with the sunlight coming through? That's when it's about to go down. A teacher noticed that two of her students were missing. And naturally, as any teacher would, she went to go out to look for them. Until she came to find the lifeless body of a 12-year-old girl by the name of Satomi Mirai laying on the ground of that empty classroom with her throat and arms slit. The frightened teacher then immediately called the police and finding the culprit who was responsible for oh, this murder shit. proved to be relatively easy. And while the teacher was dealing with the dead body of young Mirai that she just found, an 11 year old schoolgirl went back to her tasks covered in blood, but without a scratch on her body. Evidently, this was the young girl responsible for the death of 12-year-old Mirai. And upon this dark revelation, local media outlets reporting on the story decided to call her, and I quote, Girl A, to protect her anonymity. But months later, when things started to pick up, the media, propelled by pop culture, decided to call her Nevada Tan. However, the question now was, why did girl A do this? And what could Mirai have done that deserved her arms and throat to be slit with a box cutter? When box cutter, into damn. police custody, girl A said, and I quote, I've done a bad thing and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to the police. Apparently, her conscience had pushed her to come forward to the police sooner than other people in her situation would have. But still, her motives weren't entirely clear. So she spent the night at the police station, crying and refusing to eat or drink until finally- Who gives a fuck? Don't make me feel bad for her. I don't give a fuck if she was in the precinct crying, bruh. She deserves it. That's why she in jail, because she committed a crime. She decided to confess more to the police. She admitted that she and Mirai had gotten into an argument, and not just any argument. Yo, what is this argument about, bro? I, I feel like it's like, yo, they're so young. It must have been over the dumbest shit. It was an online-based one with a series of messages left on the internet that made girl A angry to the point that she decided to physically harm Mirai. At the time, the internet was not as popular as- That's what I'm saying, the internet was like, yo! 
This shit is bringing me back the first Google image, bro. Back in the day, the internet was like a barren wasteland, dude. Was today and still, these two girls had managed to use it so negatively that it ended up in the killing of one of them. And now the question was, bro, but was back in 2004, what app were they using? MySpace? That's not even MySpace. What's this? Left on girl A's internet logs. News reports at the time were quick to point out those negative comments girl A was referring to. Mostly, they revolved around the use of words that were roughly translated as heavy and overweight, which are expressions that obviously negatively comment on someone's physical appearance. And clearly, she didn't take that lightly. Mitarai even decided to call the other girl a goody goody in their online discourse. But clearly many kids around the world have been bullied with words that have shamed them for their physical appearance, whether it be because they were too short, too fat, too tall, had a weird looking face, or was born with a physical defect. However, obviously, most kids have never decided to resort to an unthinkable act such as murder. But girl A was different. These words said over the internet triggered her so much that she decided to get deadly revenge. Was she mentally ill? Did she have a f So she killed somebody because they called her fat? You're a fat goody goody. I'm gonna kill you now. Bruh. Few loose screws? Who knows? But according to reports, a police psychologist said that she wasn't. However, according to her school, Girl A, or Nevada Tan, had a history of violent incidents that included the punching and kicking of other classmates, as well as an issue with a knife just a month before the murder. There were definitely major red flags in her past, and she had been giving clear signs that something darker and more sinister was coming. On the other hand, though, the public began to speculate, saying that Nevada Tan probably had Hikikomori syndrome, which is defined as a form of severe social withdrawal that has been frequently described in Japan and is characterized by adolescents and young adults who become recluses in their parents' homes, unable to work or go to school for months or even years. This seemed like a serious potential diagnosis for girl A. In fact, a bro, what kind of diagnosis was that? Was that? I I'm look, I'm gonna keep it a stack. Is that even a real diagnosis? That just sounds like laziness. And she was already beating people up in school. And, and the fact that they're trying to like, you know. Because what it sounds like is like. Yeah, this video is only halfway. Yeah. Up until today, no medical examiner has been able to declare whether girl A even had this syndrome. She did, however, show signs of withdrawing from social life, but not entirely. While evidently she quit school clubs, she kept participating in sports, especially basketball, until shortly before the incident, that is. So no one- So that's Cap. I feel like they're just making shit up to give her a condition so they could excuse her for her killing. That's what it sounds like is happening right now. It sounds like they're looking for a reason to give her a medical, like, okay, we're gonna call it this. No, she's just a dickhead. Stop it. One could say that she was completely isolated from social life. Like a That's what I'm saying. If, she, if she's in basketball clubs and shit, she wasn't isolated from social life. So I, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. When Hikiko Mori. The one thing, though, that a lot of people began to notice was that she was influenced by some of the oddest things anyone can find online. And for someone who was using the internet in 2004, she had gone a bit too far into the darkest corners of the internet. Damn. One of the professional analyses claims that she was a girl fascinated with urban legends, internet uh. subcultures, and even going as far as Goro. And reports even claim that from her own personal webpage, she and I quote, had linked shock flash movies and bizarre ASCII movies that would unnerve. I know that's not B stars. Even the most hardened internet warriors. People were also drawn to the fact that she had listed Battle Royale fanfiction as one of her interests, and her website was heavily influenced by the Red Room horror flash video. Undoubtedly, Girl A had been exploring the dark crevices of the internet for a while. And just like she was influenced by the internet, 
she ultimately influenced the society around her. According to a fan site, the sequel of the Battle Royale film had to be postponed from its original June 9th, 2004 release date to later in the year due to current events. Obviously, releasing this film just a week after an 11-year-old girl killed a 12-year-old girl due to a possible influence from this movie wasn't a good idea at all. And it's stupid because it's like... You can imagine this movie obviously wasn't rated for kids, but somehow a kid ended up watching it, and now they want to fucking blame the people who made the movie. Like, oh, you're the one that influenced her. Well, bitch, where the fuck were her parents? Maybe her parents should have been watching what the fuck she was doing. Instead, you already know how shit like this goes. They want to blame everybody else but the actual culprits, which is the house, the family, the parents, and the daughter. It's just them. Like, don't blame anybody else for, for the fuck up. It's y'all. And when it came to Japanese society, this case made people enter the debate about whether the age of criminal responsibility had to be shifted. As in the year 2000, they had already shifted the age from 16 to 14 due to the Sakakibara murders in Kobe, Japan. Now seeing what an 11 year old girl was capable of doing, they started to wonder if Damn. it was time to shift it again. Today though, the responsibility age is still 14, but the debate is still ongoing. Also, a lot of people started to wonder if it was really a good idea to allow children to be exposed to the internet. And members of Japan's bicameral parliament, also known as the National Dieto, came under criticism in the wake of the killing. Especially then, Finance Minister Sarakazu Tanagaki, who labeled the throat cutting as a quote-unquote manly crime. One thing was for sure though, Girl A had sparked a wide national conversation. Damn. Six months later, on September 15, 2004, 2004, the internet Girl population a, was still around 800 million people, was brought while to now a there's around 5.5 billion people on the internet now. The internet was in its infancy back then, so I don't know how someone so young could have access to that kind That's of what I'm content saying. in 2004. That's what back I'm saying. When most people were using Windows XP and exactly. That's what I'm saying. Whenever they were mentioning the internet, I'm like, bro, the internet in 2004, there wasn't barely anything on it. Like shit, like MySpace, I think was just forming. Facebook didn't exist. YouTube, I think, in in a sense, look, I don't know 100% if YouTube was there yet. It probably was, but it's like for you to go that deep in the internet and find all that fucked up shit, you must have just been a demented person and just searched up fucked up shit. Like, headless people, murders, I want to see organs. Like, you searched the shit up, you know? YouTube didn't exist. And if, and if it did, it was just a dating site. I'm not joking. Shit. Due to the fatal crime she committed. As a consequence, she was sent to a reformatory in Tojigi Prefecture, where she would serve two years of involuntary commitment until 2006. Girl A did not go back to her elementary school, but she clearly left an impression in the memories of her classmates. A year after the incident in March of 2005, it was time to celebrate the Okubo Elementary School. That's crazy. So she got so she got away with murder and now she's chilling, happy, throwing her cat up like her cap up in the air. Congratulations while the other girl's dead. It's graduation. The students were all given a graduation album with a very unique feature, a blank page where they could decide to place pictures of Midorai and Girl A or class pictures that had both of them. But there was a catch. Photos would only be available upon request. The printed photos would be taken securely to the school and destroyed after prints were made. Why? Well, because at this point, Girl A had gained a lot of internet fame and was now known as Nevada Tan. In fact, it was one of the class pictures that gave Girl A the Nevada Tan nickname. Nevada, because the girl who was believed to be Girl A was wearing a University of Nevada Reno sweatshirt. And Tan, because that's the childlike pronunciation of the Japanese suffix Chan, which is often used to refer to young girls as well. Mitarai, on the other hand, did get a posthumous graduation certificate, which was accepted by her father on her behalf. After fulfilling her involuntary commitment, Nevada's sentence was extended by two years in September of 2006. Finally though, on May 29th, 2008, 
Local authorities announced that they would not seek an additional sentence and Nevada was finally free and she also got a high school certificate because it was a mandatory requirement when entering junior high. Despite her actions though, her school believed that she needed the education to help in her, and I quote, reintegration into society. That's kind of true because the thing, the thing is, is like if you isolate her now, there's a very high probability that she's going to get worse. But now imagine going to school and being known as the girl that killed someone. They're going to be like, yo, do you see a PE class? I'll be like, what about what happened in PE class? Yo, that bitch that killed that girl like six years ago. What are you talking about? Yo, Nevada Tan, she goes to our school now. You dead ass? Bro, she in gym class right now. Bro, I'm scared. Like, they probably was talking mad shit like when they saw her ass come to school. The end of her sentence, however, had to be followed with a psychological examination. Because of her issues with communication and her obsessive interest, she was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome. Today, Nevada Tan has a cult following, with many people admiring her life and even making songs about her. People are weird. She even became a popular meme that apparently peaked in 2015, which made people ponder the condition of Japanese society. And the fans who paid close attention to Nevada's case now know her real name, which came to light after a Japanese TV Fuji television news anchor accidentally mentioned it while showing the girls school drawings. Wow. Bro, wh that's another thing I gotta talk about. What, what, what is this? What is all this like? They don't wanna show the name of the perpetrator. Why? Why are you trying to protect the fucking dickheads? I don't understand this. Oh, we gotta protect them. We gotta make sure nobody knows what their real name is. Man, fuck them. She was technically a minor. I don't give a fuck. She literally killed somebody. Family privacy, fuck that shit. She killed another kid. Man. Oh, she's a minor. She committed a fucking crime. While Japanese law prohibits the releasing of names of minors involved in crimes. This naive news anchor let the info slip and now everyone knows that Nevada's real name is Natsumi Suji. As for the victim's family, they had shocking reactions in the aftermath of this deadly event. Who gives a fuck? even went as far as saying that there was no point in hating Nevada. Neither he nor his father wanted revenge. They just wanted Nevada to straighten up and live in the society where they lived, even if it wasn't their same community. That sounds like a peaceful perspective, but that didn't convince Nevada to stay near them. Today though, Nevada Tan's whereabouts are completely unknown, and her family has dissolved and scattered. There were rumors that her father stayed in Sasebo, but no one has seen him in a while. Nevada's image, however, is still alive and thriving on the internet. People are convinced that she lives in the middle of nowhere and rarely goes out, but that hasn't stopped fans from posting photos on social You know what, chat? We're gonna go to Japan, and we're gonna find her. Mm-hmm. Yup. Yup, we. And when I find her, and when I find her, I'm gonna help her open up these Pokemon cards. Um, trick or trade. Um, from Pokemon. Um, let's open up this pack and um, let let's see let's see what's inside. Um. Wow, that's that's pretty nice. Um, we, we got this tree. Um, we 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 got a lamp in and a and a. Oh, that's 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 a dust coal. That's nice. That's nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> you gotta fly to Japan for all of us. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's three cards per pack. 